I woke up to an interesting story. CNN's Stephen Collison has published an analysis of Donald Trump's winning streak. No, really. I got almost a third of the way into the article before Collison stopped listing all of the president's recent successes. It was amazing to read some balanced reporting. From CNN, of all places. I think that's worth talking about, don't you? When our society discusses issues politely with each side seeking a peaceful resolution, everyone benefits. When the discussion is a highly polarized shouting match between people who just don't listen to each other, well, it's time for some roasted opinions. I don't think that I have to point out the adversarial relationship between legacy media, especially CNN, and President Trump. Donald Trump is an extremely blunt guy, more so than anyone who has sat in the Oval Office for as long as I can remember. CNN has rarely run a positive story about him, too. In fact, some of the most entertaining clips from Sarah Huckabee Sanders' press briefings have been Jim Acosta trying to score points on the President, and Sanders taking him down a peg or two. Trump pulls no punches when it comes to voicing his opinion of Acosta and CNN either. Google, you are fake news, and you will find dozens of clips on YouTube of his famous exchange with Acosta where Trump refused to give Acosta a question in January 2017. The hostility of the relationship between Acosta and the White House has only increased since then, to the point where I question why CNN doesn't reassign Acosta to a different position and let someone else who isn't personally feuding with Trump administration have a chance. Acosta either doesn't realize or doesn't care that he has become the story instead of what he is there ostensibly to report. If I was the news director of CNN, I would consider moving him to a commentary segment, or perhaps giving him a show a la Rachel Maddow, where he can rip upon Trump to his heart's content. At least until his ratings tank. Trump doesn't depend on the traditional apparatus to communicate with the American public. Instead, he bypasses the legacy media using Twitter, getting his message out to tens of millions of followers without the filtration and interpretation of the press. Once he presses send, reporters scramble to write a story based on his latest tweets and speculate upon what he meant by his 280 character or less quips is really effective at keeping Donald Trump at the heart of the news, although if it were up to me, I think that I would have someone checking his tweets before he posted them to make sure that the press office can stay on message with him. But in the age of social media, after decades of the press putting their own spin on everything coming out of Washington, D.C., would I shut down Trump's Twitter account? Um, no. Just, no. The article by Collison starts off by pointing out that if Judge Kavanaugh is confirmed, as he was projected to be at the time of publication, Trump will have delivered a long-sought but never achieved goal for either party, an ideological majority on the Supreme Court. Meanwhile, reports Collison, Trump now enjoys the best jobs data in 49 years, a great economy, a shift to a firmer stance against China and trade, ratcheting up the pressure on Iran in response to the long-term interference in other countries in the Middle East, more favorable trade deals with Mexico, Canada, and South Korea, and the reduction of refugee emissions into the U.S. I would add to that list the successful diplomacy with North Korea and Trump's refusal to be bullied by the EU something which I believe will widen the cracks in this most undemocratic pan-European government and perhaps lead to more nations exiting. Collison then starts listing every criticism of the Trump administration, which is really what I expected. He also points out that voters will have to decide if this is the kind of president that they want to elect in 2020, which is also to be expected. Then, the bombshell conclusion which just blew me away, and I quote, But it is also no longer possible to credibly argue, despite the distracting blizzard of controversy, busted decorum, and staff chaos constantly lashing Washington, that there is not something significant taking place that is changing the political and economic character of the nation itself.
consider my mind blown. Is CNN finally taking the president seriously? Are they starting to admit that Trump really is having an impact? That he is forming a legacy already, not just of strife, but also of major shifts in the way that America deals with the rest of the world? It certainly seems so to me. In this article, there is credit claim for Obama for the rapidly growing economy. And yes, the blame for the never-ending political partisanship is thrown squarely at Trump's doorstep. We aren't playing political games with important functions of government. It's Trump. We must resist him. Resist him? The man promised jobs, strong borders, better trade deals, lower taxes, a restoration of America's power and influence overseas, and an end to politics as usual in Washington. So far, he has delivered jobs, 3.7% unemployment, better trade deals, including the replacement of NAFTA, and lower taxes, Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017. He's still working on strengthening the borders, part of the reason why he's working through the backlog of judicial nominations based on the rulings that are coming out of California, and restoring America's international position, especially against the EU, who seems to think that they get to dictate policy to the rest of the world, and ending politics as usual in Washington, quite possibly his biggest challenge and one in which he is taking on the entrenched bureaucracy both parties in Congress and the most woke Americans from Hollywood and Silicon Valley. Perhaps he could use our help in that. Why would Trump supporters resist him? He's delivering his campaign promises. He's standing for the changes that need to be made to bring about an end to the cultural divisions which are President Obama's true biggest legacy. Now that's just my opinion. Comment below to share yours. If you like this video, check out my playlist. Check out these channels that I have subscribed to for more great content. New episodes are coming, so subscribe and ring the bell.